also released its numbers for the fourth quarter. Rima Tendulkar is here with the details. Rima, can you decode those numbers for us? How is Infosys looking? Well, it's a big miss for Infosys. On the top line, the company's revenues have fallen by minus 2.2% versus expectations of a half a percent decline. This is the second consecutive quarter where the revenues of the company have contracted. So Q4 has come in much lower than expectations. They've ended the year FI24 at 1.4%, which is lower than their own guidance of 1.5% to 2%. And remember, the company had come out with a guidance. They had updated their guidance only in January. In January, they said that they will end, you know, FI24 with a 1.5% to 2%. But things have clearly deteriorated and not gone as per plan, which is why Q4 has turned out to be weaker than street expectations and the company has missed the full year guidance. And what's even more disappointing is uh, the FI25 <coughs> revenue forecast. The company, I believe, is guiding for a revenue growth of just 1% to 3%, and that is much, much lower than what the street was anticipating. Uh, the street was working with an FI25 guidance, at least minimum 2% at the lower end, and the guidance at 1% to 3% has come in lower than expectations. EBIT margin guidance is similar to what we've had in FI24, which is 20, point, uh, 20 to 22%. Um, so it's a big, big miss for, uh, you know, Infosys. Even this time, the press conference has been delayed. It typically starts at about 4.30, but this time it started at 5.30. So the board meeting seems to have gone on for longer than expected. The deal wins for the company uh, are still very strong. I think the deal wins in the current quarter have come in at over $4.5 billion, which is a record high. The company has also made an acquisition. They have acquired Intech, a leading engineering R&D service provider focused on German automotive industry. The cost of acquisition is $450 million, which includes upfront and earnouts. And this company had a revenue of about 170 million euros in the year gone by unaudited. So there is an acquisition. But I think the street is going to be very, very disappointed. If you have some, uh, you know, reactions with us and just to... Okay, we'll get to, you know, earnings uh, reactions to these numbers in just a bit. But just to compare Infi versus TCS. Now, TCS in the current quarter had reported a 1.1% revenue growth. As compared to that, Infosys is at minus 2%. Margins for uh, TCS were a beat. Margins for TCS expanded by 100 basis points to 26%. Infi has reported a margin contraction of 40 basis points to 20.1%. So, um, you know, there's a big divergence in what we've seen between Infi and TCS this time. And I think what's more disappointing is uh, that, you know, something changed in the environment in the last three months because of which the company has not been able to meet even its FI24 guidance despite updating it just three months back. And even the FI25 guidance at 1% to 3% appears to be much, much lower. The Infosys ADR is now down 3% in pre, um, you know, in uh, pre-opening uh, right now. So it looks like there is going to be a big disappointment to fall. The stock went into its earnings today, at least in the green. It was up 0.3%, though in the last couple of days, we have seen the stock correct a fair bit. That's the top management of Infosys getting ready uh, to uh, address uh, the media. You've got Salil Parekh over there. Uh, Infosys has been battling slower growth. You know, between Infi and TCS, Infi was um, Infi's growth was outpacing that of TCS from FI20 to FI23. And then in FI24, as the macro environment deteriorated, discretionary spending got hit. Between the two, Infi got hit harder, which is why Infosys is ending the year with a 1.4% growth, lower than that of TCS, which was 3.4% growth. Uh, <coughs> until, I think, the discretionary demand recovers, uh, it's going to be a tough ride for Infosys. The question is how conservative the guidance, uh, how uh, conservative the company has been uh, when they've come out with a 1% to 3% guidance, or is this uh, what the growth is going to be? Uh, Prakash Divan is now with us. Uh, Prakash, Q4 is a big, big miss, right, compared to expectations. We had the Q, you know, we had a full year guidance updated in January, which gave us an indication of what Q4 is going to be, you can do the back calculation and come out with a number or at least a range. But this performance in March has been even weaker than that. What have you made of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And especially when it comes just two days after what seemed like a, a glimmer of uh, promise and hope from TCS, I think these numbers will be very disappointing. It's the relativity of these numbers also, uh, apart from the absolute uh, nature of numbers, that just seems disappointing. Uh, one to three percent. What have you made of the guidance? 
There were some on the street even hopeful of a two, four, four to six percent growth performance. So, so, so this very clearly means that the uh, uh, management is still not confident of any sort of a recovery from what they've been struggling, what they had alluded to, and it's possibly, uh, it possibly also means that any any improvement in the guidance could be at least a year away. You know, because it's way off the mark for three to five percent that uh, we were uh, anticipating. So it's exactly like fifty percent off from there. So I my sense is that it will take it at least three four quarters for it to get it to that, which means the stock doesn't really have any kind of a uh, headwind to support it or, or the business kind of any traction unless something changes dramatically to the middle of the financial year. Uh, Prakash, sorry to interrupt. Salil Parekh is speaking. Let's cut across. For the full year was twenty point seven percent. For large deals, we had an excellent year and the fourth quarter. For the full year, it was at $17.7 billion in large deals, comprising of 90 deals. For Q4, we had $4.5 billion in large deals. This is the highest ever large deal value in a financial year for us. For Q4, our year-on-year -year revenue growth was flat in constant currency and declined by 2.2% quarter-on-quarter. Our operating margin for Q4 was at 20.1%. We are seeing excellent traction with our clients for generative AI work. We're working on projects across software engineering, process optimization, customer support, advisory services, and sales and marketing. We are working with market leading, open access, and closed large language models. As an example, in software development, we've generated over 3 million lines of code using one of the generative AI large language models in the public domain. In several situations, we've trained the large language models with client-specific data within our projects. We've put generative AI in our services and developed playbooks for each of our offerings. We are committed to ethical and responsible use of artificial intelligence. We became the first IT services company globally to achieve the ISO 42001 to 2023 certification testifying to our commitment to excellence in AI management. All of this work in AI is part of our Topaz offering and capability. We are delighted to announce the strategic acquisition of a company in the engineering services space today. We continue to focus on our margin program. We saw good impact during this financial year uh, that we've seen in our results. As we look at the start of financial year 25, we see the discretionary spending and digital transformation work at the same level. We see the focus on cost efficiency and consolidation continuing. Our large deal wins in financial year 24 will help us in financial year 25. With that, our revenue growth guidance for the financial year 25 is growth of 1% to 3% in constant currency terms. Our operating margin guidance for the financial year 25 is 20% to 22%. With that, let's open it up for questions. Thank you, Salil. Joining Salil is Mr. Jayesh Sangarachka, Chief Financial Officer, Infosys. With that, we have the first question from Ritu Singh from CNBC TV 18. Ritu. Hi, Salil. Hi, Jayesh. Uh, you know, first, just on your revenue guidance, uh, uh, on the lower end, you've actually lowered, uh, you know, the guidance compared to the previous year, now at 1% to 3%. Uh, give us a sense of what you built into it when you say deal wins have been the highest ever in FI24, what you expect, uh, you know, what your conversation with clients has been, uh, what the pipeline is looking like. And earlier you'd highlighted verticals like high-tech, BFSI, etc., showing some weakness. Um, are you seeing some improvement there? Also for the, I think now the fifth quarter in a row, the headcount has been coming down. Um, any outlook you could give us there as well? And, uh, uh, you know, under your project Maximus, uh, you know, you've been working on expansion of your margins, uh, yet we're seeing in terms of guidance a similar range as the previous year. Um, tell us if there's, uh, you know, if this is a conservative estimate, both in the revenue and guidance, please. Uh, so I'll start with the revenue. Uh, Jayesh will comment on, on a couple of the other points. Um, on the revenue, what we are seeing is the environment in terms of discretionary uh, and digital work is similar to what we've ended in this year. 
We also had uh, good traction in large deals, some of which uh, 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 will flow through in the next year, given the duration of those deals. Uh, keeping that in mind, our growth guidance for next year uh, is, as a band, higher than where we finished for this year. While the difference is small, it's still higher from where we finished this year. As we go into the industries, we see, for example, financial services to see uh, a better uh, outlook in the next year compared to the past year. Uh, we see, for example, manufacturing, which will have, while it'll still grow next year, will have a slightly lower, a slower growth than this year. So there are some puts and takes in terms of different industries. And given the outlook with the discretionary spend, and, and digital work remaining same and more fo focus on cost efficiency and consolidation, uh, we've created that revenue growth guidance. Yeah, so on the, on the net headcount increases, if you look at it, uh, when we started the year, we were at 77% uh, utilization, including trainees. Uh, you know, the growth environment also was different at that point in time, we had guided differently. So, you know, we had to re realign some of those factors as, as the growth environment changed. Uh, our utilization has now gone up to 82%, including trainings, 83.5%, excluding trainings. That's one of the tracks under Maximus as well. Our attrition has also come down significantly, right? So that's that's the reason why you see a you know net headcount reduction. As we go forward, we always plan looking at what we are exiting in terms of utilization. We are still at 82, 83% utilization, you know, depending on whether you're looking at it, including excluding uh, trainees. So that still gives us some headroom because we've always said 85% is, is achievable utilization. So that's a headroom that we have. We, we look into guidance that, that we give so that we bake in that. Attrition still remains very, very contained at 12.6%. So, you know, we have that headrooms. And we also have changed in the last few years our, our hiring model uh, significantly. So we no more hire all the, all the freshers for campus. We hire, you know, less than half of them from campus and the rest we hire off campuses. So we have that agile model. So we will look at uh, hiring as, as the year goes through. We don't have a number to give at this point in time. Um, so the question, sorry, on uh, what the deal pipeline is looking like. You said some of the deal wins from last year will flow into this year, but uh, the new deal wins, uh, you know, what sort of visibility do you have? So the deal pipeline, again, remains good. As you've seen in this uh, past financial year, we did 90 deals at 17.7 billion. We have a good pipeline. The deals are more uh, on cost and efficiency and consolidation. That is the, the theme in our la large deals pipeline. Thank you. The next.